Well, hello, all you beautiful people out there. Today, we'll be talking about HMOs in stock contracts, specifically stock contracts. And what does 2023 hold for HMOs in stock contract? As you can see, I am in my anti-traffic gear, so I'm making sure I can get in and out of um, traffic as I can and quick to meetings as I can. Um, and on a windy day like today, it makes it very, very entertaining. <laughs> HMOs in stock contract for 2023. Important to know that the war is still going on in the Ukraine. Energy prices have gone up. Interest rates has gone up. Cost of living has gone up. Everything has gone up. Rents has gone up, um, which has helped a little bit, but not at the same rate as what the interest rates have gone up uh, and the energy prices. What HMOs work in stock? I'm currently I'm in one of the HMOs that we manage. And it's a nine bed HMO. Uh, this one works very well. Partly because all the rooms are en suite, all the rooms are double, which means that the cheapest room in this house is achieving £450 per calendar month. What do you need to make it work? Well, number one, you need more than five or more rooms. Anything less than that, you're going to really struggle because, well, the cost of living is just too much. You won't be able to sustain the costs and make money. As you can see, this house is nice and big. All the lights work on sensors and so nothing stays on for a long time. And then coming in through the kitchen, um, nice and big kitchen, uh, good for all communal areas. So it just works very, very well. I'll carry on with this in a moment and another property of ours, but it's important to know that you need to have five bedrooms or more. Right, so as we've just discussed, five and above rooms works really, really well. I'm just in another one of our HMOs, and as you can see, the communal area looks great. Kitchen looks great, and no, I didn't uh, tidy up. Um, it is just one of these houses where people just tend to, to look after the place because it's such a great refurb that was done four years ago, as I've said in other videos already. And just look at the state of it. It's still in really good condition. Make sure that you spend that money on your refurb. Make sure that you've got that thermal envelope going around. Make sure that you've got all the necessary heating specifications uh, that will be dictated by your local council and things like that. Make sure that your the quality of fixtures and fittings that you use is really good. Make sure that furniture that you put in, like this sofa has seen how many bums and asses threw it already and still in not bad condition. I didn't change or do anything in this communal space when I came in. So it's warts and all here, baby. Anyway, spend the money on the refurb. Otherwise you will spend that money during the maintenance or the lifetime that you've got that property because issues will come up. This house, any house will look great when a refurb is just finished or when it's just done. But now that it's a couple of years old, what does it look like now? So this house still looks in amazing condition. And that is the important thing. What does it look like after it has had a couple of people through it? So very important. Make sure that you use the right fixtures and fittings. Okay, and then this house really, really excites me. Because in this house, which is obviously not complete yet, as you guys can see, um, I just love how the layout works in this house. You've got this big bay window here. Um, you've got ensuite right behind uh, in there. I'm not going to touch anything because uh, the guys are painting, getting it ready. Carpets are going in uh, Wednesday in this house. Now this is a six bed, six bed ah! HMO. Um, and this house will 100% make this investor money. Again, big windows, skylight, um, and then you've got your ensuite in there. What I like what the investors done here, they thought about things. So now you've got your sockets there and sockets on this side. So obviously you know where the bed's going. You know that the planning, the thought process has taken place before they've even started this refurb. And can I just show? Oh, the head height on the uh, old fire doors is brilliant. 
Then, something I've touched on a lot is the flow of the house. As you can see, got a nice big corridor from there, flowing straight through into what is now a open plan kitchen diner. Just look at that. Now, for me personally, I would have just liked to see potentially slightly more cupboard space, only because we get those phone calls a lot these days for tenants complaining about, well, where can I put my, my stuff? You know, a new tenant has just moved in. Where do I put my stuff? Is a, a question we get all the time, but I could just see it working in here. Um, how, you know, people are, can, can gather in here and actually have a good time. Now, I like this staircase as well. This is not your typical Stoke staircase. Why is it not your typical Stoke staircase? Because I don't need my helmet. All right, coming up. Have a look at that. Swinging to the left, staircase going up to the loft, and then you've got one bedroom down here. Now, they have very cleverly thought about this as well, because sometimes you have visitors, and they potentially might want to use the toilet, which is a separate toilet to all the other rooms in here. Boiler room in there, all nicely insulated in there. And then, again, this room was super tiny. This used to be two rooms. So, boxed it off uh, for the ensuite, but now you've got a lovely double bedroom. Again, they thought about things. Socket on the wall for the TV. Socket, socket, and hey, hey, more sockets. Brilliant for thinking about things. Because this is a rectangular shaped room, the bed can go anywhere in this room. So just have a look at the size of this. I haven't actually got my, my laser out to measure this, but I bet you this is about 14 square meters. But again, big windows, lots of light streaming in. And look at this precious, lovely steel. Let's give it a bit of a stroke, shall we? Woohoo! I feel it getting hard. Again, upstairs, the flow of the house just works. Coming in to the fourth bedroom. Nice big window, slightly smaller than the others but still a good size. Ensuite in there, enough space in here for a cupboard. And then, moving along into, again, just look at all the light that just flows in here. It is fantastic, absolutely fantastic. Uh, I can't wait to see what sort of dressings the um, investor is gonna put in here. On suite system there, but just simply because what they're going to do, this room will fetch very close to 500 pounds per calendar month. And um, just a little space under the staircase for the cleanings and you know, and have your hoovers and stuff. And now the piece that we just don't want to touch anything, everything is still wet. Coming up into the loft now, ladies and gentlemen. Watch this space. It is enormous. Just look at that. So you walk into this, which is probably about 18 square meters. And then it extends into this bit in here, which is probably another nine, no, well, just probably about nine square meters. And then another further nine square meters in there. En suite in here. But this room, we are going to we are going to advertise at close to six hundred and fifty pounds. Can I just say that this is a non HMO area, and so my advice to the investor was: make the rooms big, stick your hands in your pocket, fork out the money, and make it make it a really comfortable space for tenants to come in. And I think they've achieved it here. This is truly. An amazing space.